shop. Uh, we're going to try to get these handle scales put on this paring knife today. We've got uh, got our paring knife pretty well shaped out and that. I was thinking about putting some, uh, I was thinking about putting some aluminum foil behind this uh, green here, but we've kind of scratched up the knife there where the tang is uh, to make it a little more, you know, so that it'll sparkle under there. And we're gonna place this about like so. And I think with that knife kind of scratched up like that, and I don't believe there's any need for the tin foil. Now I've already taken these and traced them out where I want the handles to be. Um, because this uh, green here is too long. Um, so I want this end where this has to taper to meet the blade properly to be wood. But where it falls off on the back uh, of the tang, I think that'll be okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get these cut out. We'll go ahead and get those cut out and uh, don't believe I'm gonna use any pins on these because I don't want to try to drill through that, uh, I don't want to try to drill through that epoxy. Um, I'm afraid that the pressure from the drill press or something might break those. So I think we're just going to glue them on with epoxy. They'll never go anywhere. That stuff is amazing. Uh, you just won't have the look of the pins in there, but we'll see. Uh, I think it'll be okay. So let's go get to the bandsaw and cut them things out and and we'll get them glued on there and, and clamped on and that glue hardens up in a couple hours we should be able to uh, to go ahead and shape those scales and uh, start getting them finished up and cleaned up and then we'll be able to sharpen our blade and uh, I think we can call that one done here in a little bit so let's get over there and get to work thanks for watching
guys well we've got our handle all shaped up here pretty nice I think we've smoothed this up uh, with some polishing compound and what have you and I've put the uh, initial edge on the blade we're gonna we still have to use a couple finer belts some of them Trivax belts I have and the leather strop really put an edge on it but uh, that's basically what we're gonna have when we're done uh, you can see into that uh, if I can get my camera to focus here you can see into that uh, green pretty well I scarred up the inside of that tang with uh, with a 40 grit belt so it made it to where you can kind of, you know, it kind of glistens in there when you get this thing just right in the light. It's kind of hard to see it in this light the way we are right now, but, uh, but so you can kind of see that it'll glisten in there. The epoxy on the back of the handle is, uh, you know, on the insides dries clear. So that doesn't affect us seeing it any. So let's get some wax on this thing. Here we're just using my good old min wax. Uh, it's just paste finishing wax. It's uh, it seems to do a pretty nice job on wood, and uh, and it works well on the. Uh, it seems to really shine up the epoxy well too. So. We'll get a bunch of this rubbed in and we'll hit it with the buffer. Now it doesn't have a big beefy handle. I know those scales were real thick when we started but that's just the piece of wood that I had to work with. Um, they were never intended to be that thick in the first place. But that was the uh, that was the thickness of the piece of wood that I was able to buy at the lumber yard, so that's what we had. gonna call her done uh, got her pretty polished up here and it's as sharp as a razor you can see into those uh, you can see into that green kind of looks cool I think with that char you know left in there for, on the edges but with the uh, with the silver of the tang back in there back in it. Not sure I really like the look without uh, without pins in it. But that's gonna make a nice little paring knife. That green is pretty it, it's pretty reflective. It stands out there pretty good I think. Uh, it's very sharp. You certainly wouldn't want to play with it.
So, uh, when you can get, when you can get that fine of curls on there, you know you got a pretty sharp blade. I may go ahead and hit it a couple more times with that leather strop. It feels like there's maybe a couple of little rough spots in there where it's kind of catching. But otherwise, you know, she'll take off some pretty fine little, uh, little deal. Let's see if it'll push through. Well, almost. You still got to kind of slice with it, but we'll. Uh, We'll take a little bit more rouge with that strop and, uh, and we'll clean it up a little bit better. There's still a couple, I can feel a couple of little burrs on this edge. You can't feel them with your finger, but they're there because you can see it catching on the paper, but, uh, but that's pretty doggone sharp right there sharp enough to peel potatoes and cut up radishes and things like that, I would think. So for all intents and purposes, he's done. It's gonna go in the mail. Uh, you know, I think it came out pretty cool. I mean, it wasn't a hard build to build this little paring knife. I mean, it's just a paring knife. It was the scales that we fought so much with, trying to get the right combination of color, the proper, uh, resin. We tried several different types of resins, several several different types of resin dyes, but we finally got it done. Uh, the green in here, it still isn't exactly what I was shooting for uh, as far as the look of the scales and what have you, but I think it's pretty good. I mean, I think that came out pretty doggone sharp. Uh, you know, She'll know that nobody else has one. That's for sure. So, glad to finally have that wrapped up. I appreciate y'all watching as usual. Like I say, if it weren't for you guys watching and subscribing, I'd have no reason to have a channel. So I really appreciate it. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, I'll put a little button right down here at the end of the video, right smack dab in the center. You can click on that to subscribe. And uh, give me a like. Maybe, you know, helps out my channel a little bit and gets me out there a little better. So share these videos if you want to share them with your friends and stuff and, and uh, help me get out there a little more. It'd be very, very much appreciated. So listen, when you're working in your shop, please be careful. Wear your safety glasses, shields, whatever you need to do at the time. I didn't wear anything while I was buffing that handle and stuff because I'm just working with wax and a slow speed buffer, but you know, there's times when you need to have your safety gear on and uh, and just be careful. Remember what I did to my finger in that last video. Feeling up pretty good now, but man, I mean, it, I slipped and hit that belt, 40 grit belt on that 2x72 and it just, but I, I was almost like a knife. It just shaved that off of there, like right now. It even took some of the fingernails, so uh, be careful. I went ahead and finished that work that I was doing with a pair of gloves on, so. Always be careful, get out to your shop and do something, have some fun, tear something up, make something, clean your shop. Mine needs to be cleaned right now. So that'll probably be my next project before I get started on anything else. So got a whole box of knives over here I need to sharpen for a friend of mine. I probably won't make a video about that. It's just a bunch of pocket knives, hunting knives. He's got this whole box of knives over here that he brought me. So we'll get those sharpened up for him and out of the way. Uh, I need to make a paring knife for his wife. Um, don't know yet how we're gonna work that. I think instead of, I think we'll do an epoxy kind of like this, but I think instead of burning it with the Lichtenberg, I think what we'll do on that knife for his wife is we'll take the Dremel and we'll etch in some kind of patterns that we want in the scales 
and then we'll fill that with epoxy. Um, we can etch a pattern in. We can. Uh, it's almost like using a little miniature uh, router, and we can kind of router in the pattern that we want, how we want it. We can take a little torch and burn a few highlights here and there if we want to uh, for a little bit of burn look. Then we'll fill that in with some cool resin and uh, but we're gonna make it the same way. I don't know if you knew or not how we came up with this, but uh, I wanted the knife to be stainless steel because she's gonna be using it, throwing it in the sink, what have you. So we wanted it to be a stainless steel blade. Uh, and you can forge stainless steel. The problem with stainless steel is it's a whole big can of worms to heat treat, harden it, and temper it. So what we did with this is we just took a butcher knife, uh, an old store-bought butcher knife, and we cut it off right in front of the handle and drew out our pattern for our paring knife on the butcher knife blade. Then we just did stock removal and cut it out of that. So we know we've got good hardened steel blade. Uh, you have to be careful that you don't get it too hot when you're grinding on it or whatever. Make sure that you don't uh, ruin the temper. But that's all we did with this one and that's what we'll do with Scott. Uh, a knife for my buddy Scott's wife. So, All right friends, take care. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.